Hey friends, welcome to Last Day's Awakening. Pastor Jim here. Thanks for joining me. It's been a while since I was able to post any content. We've had, uh, as many of you know, uh, an ongoing health issue in our home uh, that became very severe over the last few weeks. Uh, but, you know, through prayer, God has uh, has helped us, and um, and we're very thankful for that. Uh, you've been on my mind. Of course, the whole world has been on my mind. I just broke a rule, didn't I? I just touched my face. But I'm in my own car. Nobody else is here. I've got... I've got plenty of hand sanitizer for myself. Our world is really in a wild topsy-turvy time right now, and it's locked down. Amazing how the two could go together. But I wanted to share a few thoughts with you. First of all, my two cents about where this came from, how it was started, and what has gone on with the hysteria is just that. It's two cents. We're living in a time of deception, and it's really hard to know what the truth is. No matter where you're getting your news, no matter who is telling you what, it's very difficult to know what the actual truth is to any of it. I have my suspicions, but my suspicions really don't go very far. They're for me. They're not for you today. My point today is to encourage you because I think we're on the, on the cusp of an incredible, incredible opportunity that the church needs to step up and take advantage of. So my challenge today to you as, as a believer in Jesus is to pray and pray hard for what I'm about to share with you. It's very simple, but I've learned over the years that the enemy sees things on the horizon, not as a visionary, but he sees the spiritual activity that takes place in the heavenlies. He knows uh, in his brain what is coming. He knows enough that he understands and he tries to preempt. He does everything he can to preempt in these days one thing, and that is Jesus Christ coming back to the planet to rule and to reign and binding him for a thousand years. And so you know that he is at work. So he tries to preempt what he sees happening in the spirit realm. Uh, but God always takes what the enemy used for evil and can turn it into good, incredible good. I want to read a passage of scripture to you from Matthew chapter 24. And before you comment, I, I understand that Matthew 24 is written to the Jewish nation and to the Jewish believers. I know that, but understand as well that what is taking place and what Jesus wrote for the Jews also affects us Gentiles. It affects the world. As these things approach, the whole world is affected, and we're supposed to be sober and alert to see what is coming and what the horizon is telling us. We're to look and see that the the clouds are forming. We're the ones to look and see that the harvest is ready. And even though what Jesus talks about is specifically oriented to a time of tribulation that is to come, I believe we will not be here according to the scripture. You can disagree with that. That's fine. Uh, but I do know this, that we are in a time of incredible spiritual activity, even in the middle of this coronavirus shutdown of the whole planet. So let me read this up to verse 14, and then I'm going to share something. Here's what Jesus said. They left their temple. This is verse 1, chapter 24, verse 1. Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. But he answered them, You see all these... Do you not? Truly, I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. So there's the teaser. He's talking about what happened in A.D. 70 when Titus' armies entered Jerusalem and tore down the Temple Mount, the temple and everything, uh, and uh, basically scattered the rest of the Jews to the four winds of the world. Uh, they were not collected again, basically, until 1948. The collection started. It's still happening. And Jerusalem is now a nation again in fulfillment of prophecy. Uh, you can go all kinds of places to see that fulfillment, especially Ezekiel chapter 36, 37. But this is the teaser to the disciples, and they're going to bite on it. He sat down on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming? 
and of the close of the age. So the signs that he's going to give are the signs that the coming of the close of the age is moving toward us rapidly. Jesus answered, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray, and you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. One of those is ethnicity against ethnicity. The other is nation state against nation state in the form of kingdoms. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Luke adds uh, pestilences, multiple pestilences. If coronavirus isn't a pestilence, even if it's a made-up pestilence, it's a pestilence. It's affecting the entire planet. But he says, all these are but the beginning of birth pangs. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. The word then doesn't mean after. It means whenever this is happening, all of these signs are happening, and they will happen throughout time. You're going to be persecuted. Unfortunately, believers are going to be handed over to be persecuted, and, and many will lose their lives, and that's happening even today. It's happening in Iraq. It's happening in Syria. It's happening in China. It's happening in many, many places in the world. We see that. But the key here is to understand that this is the beginning of birth pangs, that they're going to increase, they're going to get more severe. He goes on, he says, you'll be handed, uh, you hated by all nations for my name's sake, and then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. That's happening. Because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. That's the spirit of lawlessness spirit of 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 just lawlessness in the whole world it's the spirit of lawlessness of judaism where even people in judaism are for, forsaking the law but it's a spirit it's a spirit of lawlessness and that will be increased and the result will be the love of many will grow cold but the one who endures to the end will be saved and this gospel listen to this verse 14 this gospel this gospel this good news this gospel of the kingdom will be preached, proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And that's what I want to key in on. We, uh, we have an unprecedented opportunity. Because of the coronavirus, because of the shutdown, uh, you know, we were, as a pastoral team yesterday, trying to figure out what we were going to do as far as how we were going to handle gatherings we do not believe this is the time to defy the government. This isn't a persecution situation. So in, in, in our view, it, this is not the moment to defy. This is the moment to obey those who have authority over us. They're not asking us to do something unbiblical because we can still gather and we will gather through this very means that we're using right now on YouTube. We'll use Facebook Live and other sources to be able to gather at least in these next couple of weeks, electronically together and stay connected. Using the very tools that uh, I, amongst others, have derailed as having separated us and, and separated us as far as relationships. But now we're going to depend on it to stay connected socially. Amazing how things come around that way. But here's the unprecedented opportunity. This weekend, because of the shutdown of so much as far as gatherings as far as uh, businesses as far as churches coming together understand that the internet is going to be flooded around the world listen to this it's going to be flooded around the world with the gospel deny someone a freedom deny some things that they're used to uh, maybe even taking for granted and, and not participating in much like a like a church service. Deny them that privilege, and what is it that they're going to want most? What do they seek to have? What do they seek to do? They want to gather. So I believe that this is almost a, a carrot that is going to be dangled in front of people. They can't they can't have that carrot. It's going to be dangled in front of them. They're going to reach for it. They're going to reach for it through the internet. 
I'm not prophesying here. Please understand that's not what I'm doing. It's not my point. There are plenty of people prophesying all kinds of things right now, and half of it is contrary to the other. Once again, you need to have the spirit of discernment to know exactly what uh, the Lord wants you to do in these days, and I think this is it. We are with the unprecedented opportunity that we're going to have this weekend and the next weekend is to blanket the planet with the gospel of Jesus Christ that every nation will have a witness that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life on the earth, paid a sacrificial death on the cross for us and to forgive us of our sins to all who would call upon him we would be saved he was raised again from the dead to prove it all to be true and then he ascended into heaven awaiting the day when he would return for his bride appearing in the skies first thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 18 tells us of that moment when the trumpet will sound the dead in christ will rise first we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the lord john 14 1 and 2 we're heading to father's house is it this time i don't know I don't know if it's this time or not, but this is the unprecedented opportunity to share the gospel around the whole globe. If that doesn't excite you, oh my, I pray for you. That excites me. Even though this is a time of trial and testing, that excites me that we have an opportunity to share. I'll be sharing from my pulpit. Uh, you know, we're, we're not a large church uh, in St. Joseph. We're relatively new. But people are coming to know Jesus and they're growing in Christ. Well, we're going to be gathering together on the internet along with, I believe, lots of other people. But imagine that being multiplied by the millions across this country and around the world. Do you see the opportunity? So what should we do? Believe, first of all. Be Jesus, secondly. that Literally. Check on your neighbors. Invite people to tune in to broadcasts. It's an unprecedented opportunity. Ask people to watch church services. Pick your favorites. Pick your local church, your local church pastor. Find a way to invite people to watch on their phones or on their computers or on their television, whatever platform they're watching from, and, and to hear the gospel. I believe it's going to be preached with power for the most part. That Yeah, there will be oddballs, but... There are always a few tares that grow up with the wheat. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not making a judgment. It's just some weirdos out there, and some would count me a weirdo. That's fine. Um, but I love Jesus, and this is our moment. And so thirdly, pray for the next few days. Would you take some time fast and pray? You're going to be lo probably locked up in your home anyway. <laughs> You're probably bored. You're probably bored. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in quality prayer, crying out to God that souls would be saved, that souls would be awakened, souls would wake up to the truth of Jesus Christ as the gospel is being preached, and that the kingdom of God will increase exponentially this weekend. We could be that close. We could be that close to however you believe eschatology is going to unfold. We're that much closer to the Lord returning to the planet to set up his kingdom. We're rushing headlong toward it. The end of this age is coming soon. It's upon us. And the possibility is uh, we don't have much more time. So this weekend is huge, and the next weekend is huge. Would you join me in pray? Father, right now, we, uh, we see this opportunity. I don't know how many are honing in and keying in on this great opportunity that is before us, but this is huge. So I pray, I pray in Jesus' name that your gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ will blanket the globe and that hearts will be more attentive than ever before and hungry to hear this truth above all other truths about the king above all other kings, the Lord of all lords, and that millions, millions, millions around this globe would come to know you as Lord and Savior. That is our prayer. I believe that is your will. So we pray it in your will and in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lastly, hey, local churches need your support. 
I'm not asking for me. I'm not asking for anybody else. You have a local church. Hopefully you have a local church. And while we're all locked up, while we're all quarantined, while we're all prevented from gathering, I, I'm just going to ask you to be faithful to your local church. They support missions. They're supporting, they're supporting the ministry, and it's going to continue even though we're not able to gather physically. So would you make sure that you do that with your local church? I'm going to leave a link down below for our Cornerstone family here in northern Missouri. That, that's, that's for our family that would be tuning in to Last Day's Awakening right now that you can click on and that you can give. Uh, or you can mail them to your local church however you do it, no matter what church you're a part of, whatever local church you're a part of. Please continue to be faithful and give during this time. Uh, and, and be attentive to your neighbors and to your family members and to your church family members and be attentive to their needs. This is our time for sharing and for standing up and being Jesus. So let's do it. We have a, This is unprecedented. This is unprecedented. We don't know how long it'll last. So take the opportunity, would you? We can do this. Man, we can do this. So let's do it.